Hello, welcome to Verbling. I'm Teacher Oakley, and for the next hour here on Verbling, we are going to be talking about horses and horseback riding. We will be uh, practicing our English conversation skills as well as learning a whole bunch of related horse and horseback riding jargon. Uh, okay, jargon uh, are words that are specifically related to one uh, topic, one very specific topic. So, uh, of course, uh, the whole sport of horseback riding and the, uh, has its own kind of language, lots of interesting vocabulary. To learn as well, we'll talk about our experiences with horses. Related. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Victor. Welcome to the class. Victor. Hello. Uh, Victor, I am guessing one of two things when you. Hello? Hi. Hello? Oh, there we go. Okay. Hello. Hi. Yo. Hi. Okay. I, I. There was echo before, but it's good now. You, you got it. Oh, okay. Hi, Victor. I need. Hi, I need problem. Uh, I'm first. I'm first class in website. Okay. Uh, all right. Your this this is your first verbling class. Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. No problem. Uh, welcome to the class. Uh, let me basic uh, rules. When I'm talking to you, obviously unmute your microphone and, and talk. And when other students are speaking, please uh, mute your microphone or when I'm speaking. Please mute your microphone so that we aren't distracted by background noise. Okay? Okay. Okay. You listen? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. All right. Wh where are you from, Victor? I am from Brazil. Okay. Terrific. We have lots of Brazilians here in Verbling. So, welcome. Welcome to Verbling. Welcome to the class. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. We'll talk to you in a little bit, little bit here. I also want to welcome David. Hi, David. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How have you been? So far, so good. Can't complain. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, okay, plenty of room in the class. The class was fully booked, so come on in, kids. Don't be shy. All right, here we go. Speaking of Brazil... Uh, okay, uh, hello, Wilson. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. How are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. Okay, great. Uh, to kind of warm up, I'm, I'm going to start with a basic question on our topic, horses and mm -hmm. horseback riding. Um, so I'm going to go back to Victor. Victor. Victor, have you ever ridden a horse? Victor? Hi. Hi. Have uh. you have you ever ridden a horse? No? <laughs> Okay, oops, <laughs> kind of struggling, it's first class there. Okay, come on, come on back, Victor. I'll, I'll be, I'll take it easy on you. Okay, David, how about you? Do you have any experience horseback riding? Uh, not much, but I did, I did ride a horse when I was in my teens, in my hometown. It was fun. But uh, since then, I haven't had. Oh no, no, wait! I, I lie. Uh, when I, yeah, maybe 
eight years ago I was in California and I went to see this castle in California. It's a castle, Hearst Castle. Uh, yeah, okay. And outside the Hearst Castle there was a place that you can ride horses and then that was my last time I, I rode a horse and it was kind of fun. St. Louis Apispo, right? Is that where it is? It must be. I can't remember the name of the uh, the area, but the I remember the castle, the Hearst Castle, and it's and impressive, it, impressive it, that castle. I've been there, and I think we probably went horseback riding at the same place. <laughs> right. It's, yeah. It must cool. be. Yeah. It's very cool. All right. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Oh, that's cool. All right. Yeah. Nice area too. Okay. Uh, great. Wilson, how about you? Have Have you had any experience? Horseback riding or yes. trail riding, we call it trail riding. Yes, yes, uh, I, I did. I, I have it. When I was a little boy, I used to live in a farm in the interior of Brazil. So we we had uh, uh, some horses, and then I used to ride a horse for sure. Okay, cool. Uh, let me adjust my air conditioning. Hot. Um, uh, Wilson. Uh, for some strange reason, this is a little bit odd, but we always use the preposition on a farm instead of in a farm. I don't know why. English is crazy. Usually we use in to talk about a place like in a city, in the province, in, in the country. But even though a farm is a clearly boundaried area, we I, I don't know why we use on. We always say on a on. farm. On a farm. Okay. Okay. Right. I was about yeah. to say something about that because that was one of my mistakes that I that I made in one of my tests. Because yeah. I, if I was in a farm, they say no, it's on a farm. So why? Nobody knows why. It's just on a farm. <laughs> exactly. Right. Nobody knows. I can't explain it. It's, it's strange. It doesn't really follow the normal pattern. But anyway, uh, that, that's cool, Wilson. I, I also lived on a, on a farm when I was young. Uh, Wilson, did you have to take care of horses and other animals or other animals? No, no, no. I, 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 I did not. Uh, it wasn't my duty to take care of the animals, okay? Uh, we had some employees, and uh, I was a little boy at the time, so... I was there only to to be with my father and to to have fun. Oh, no fair! <laughs> no fair at all. Yes. I I had to wake up at five in the morning when I was maybe eight nine years old to slop the hogs. That means feed, <laughs> feed the pigs, feed the chickens, uh, uh, hay the horses. We had cow, a cow. I had to do all that stuff. No fair. You got away with it. <laughs> I'm jealous. I hated that. Anyway, uh, okay, let me, uh, let me also welcome Keiko to the class. Hi, Keiko. How are you? Hey, teacher. I'm fine. Thank you. Cool. Good nice to see, see you. you again. As always. My pleasure. Uh, how, how about yourself? You have any experience with horses and uh, riding? Yes, teacher. When I was a boy, I I I usually rode to at least two times a week, twice a week. Really? Because I because. Uh, 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 as I lived in a, uh, on a farm in the countryside, we used uh, uh, this this transportation mean <laughs> mean to to take to take uh, milk uh, uh, to leave milk from the the farm to the the dairy fabric, the dairy manufacturer. Ah, I see. Okay. All right. You you use these this transportation means, or normally we say it like this, Keiko. You use this means with an S of transportation. 
this is one where we now I know usually we just tend to use a, a noun sorry a noun as an adjective and then a, a noun transportation means but it is still an s um, and that's there's nothing wrong with that that's perfectly fine but this is one we tend to use the of preposition means of transportation um, okay. Okay, and you had to deliver the milk to the to the dairy factory. Yeah, yeah, right. I, I'm trying to <laughs> I'm trying to remember what we we don't usually call it a dairy factory. Um, I, I, I got your meaning. Deliver the milk to the dairy. What do we call it? Call it the dairy plant processing plant. Yeah, There's a word yeah, for it. yeah. Dairy process, processing plant. Yeah, I guess that's better. Sometimes I, you know, I think we just call it a dairy. Where where I grew up in the United States in Vermont, it, there was a lot of dairy farms. It's a major, major part of the economy there. Actually, they're pretty well known for ice cream and cheese and you know dairy products. So. I should know <laughs> what I'm talking about, but I don't. It's been too long, I suppose. Okay, so I think sometimes we just call it the dairy. Uh, okay, back to let's get off of cows. <laughs> you ever rode a cow, Keiko? <laughs> <laughs> no, teacher. But no? I, I, I watch. I, I have watched it. Uh, rodeo, rodeo, many times where I saw people uh, riding, riding uh, bulls. Yeah, riding. They ride bulls in the rodeo. Riding. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> lots sorry, of uh, sorry. Brazilians in the road. Riding. <clears throat> I cannot hear you. I. I think there's an my, issue with his internet. Can okay. you hear it? Thank yeah, you. I think he got frozen, so he's coming back, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Dave. Okay. Meanwhile, we're waiting for him to come back. Kako, I think I saw I saw you one day speaking Spanish. Do you speak Spanish too? I I try to to learn a little, but. Uh, as Portuguese and Spanish are very similar, it right. is difficult for us because sometimes we think we are speaking Spanish when when we are not speaking more than Portuguese words. <laughs> right. Well, I, I think uh, one thing that we do when we try to speak Portuguese is to make it very nasal. You, you're, uh, you, Portuguese is very nasal for us, you know, like a bom dia, you know. Yeah, Obrigado. yeah, it is true. Obrigado, bom dia. You know, very nasal and very <laughs> musical. For us, it's just less nasal and less musical for us, I think. Uh, uh, do you, do you, do you speak sport Portuguese? Do you speak Portuguese? You know, follow Portuguese. <laughs> mm -hmm. How do you? Am I saying that right? I don't think. I'm. Just, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, like say, yeah, I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Vector. Do you from Brazil? No, I'm not from Brazil. Oh, okay. I wish I could. I, I, was, I was speaking. I was speaking with. I was speaking Portuguese right now. <laughs> Mia. <laughs> meanwhile, we're waiting for the you teacher. Speak, you speak Portuguese very good. Uh, no, that's that's all, my, that's all that's all the Portuguese I know, and of course you know songs in Portuguese like uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love that song. Oh, it's a, it's an old very song. Nice. Very nice. Your pronunciation is perfect. Thank you. Maybe I should start learning Portuguese, right? Okay. And maybe forget about English. Who needs English anyway? <laughs> <laughs> I am um, Victor, so you guys are all from 
uh, from Brazil. So, Victor, wh where in Brazil are you from? I live in Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo. And Wilson? Uh, yes, I live in Sao Paulo too. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's in a city near Sao Paulo, Sao Caetano. Oh. I see. And Caco? I live in Rio. Oh, uh, Rio. The Rio. second, the, the the second bigger city, Brazilian city after São Paulo. Wow! So, are you guys getting ready for the Olympics? I hope so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, the Olympics but, next next year, right? Wow, it's exciting. Yes, yes, in Rio, yes. 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 Are you guys going to go to any of the events, like, uh, I don't know, volleyball, soccer, whatever event? No, I think, I don't think I will, I will um, uh, watch uh, personally, but, but maybe on the TV. Uh-huh. Okay. What about you, Wilson and Victor? Yes, I'm a candidate to be a volunteer. Oh, yes. great! I yes, I will be there. I took some training, and then maybe uh, next year I will be there as a volunteer, volunteer to to help in English and in Spanish. Yeah, that would be amazing! Wow, yes, what experience, will, right? Yes, uh, yes, for wow. sure. Well, good luck. That, that will be the first time. Yeah, the first time I try to do this. Right, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it's, I mean, whatever it is, you know, I mean, I know that there is a lot of controversial about. You know the money Brazil is spending in the uh, stadiums and building mm. new facilities for the uh, Olympic Village in Brazil. Oh, he's back! You're back. Okay. What? Okay. Yeah. Hi, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. A little interruption in my connection, I guess. Oopsie. Uh, yeah, I'm back. Uh, okay. Um, Let's continue. Uh, okay, uh, I'd like to kind of introduce, start introducing some vocabulary and talking about that. Uh, all right, uh, Victor. Victor, are you there? Hi. Hi. There we go. Hi. All right. Have you? Do you have any experience with horses? No, no experience in a horse. Uh, only watch TV. Oh, okay. Only really see them on TV. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Do you, do you have any idea what uh, the equipment that you need for horseback riding is called in English? Probably not, if you... No, no, no. Yeah. No. Okay. Let me let me ask your uh, classmates. All right. Does anybody know the general term for all of the different pieces of equipment that you may need? Oh, my goodness. Run, Victor. The dogs are coming. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Okay. Uh, we have a new student. Let me welcome our new. Give me a second to welcome our new student, Pedro. Hello. Hello, Pedro. Welcome to the class. Pedro, are you there? Hello, hello. Okay, uh, Pedro. Just so you know, I I cannot hear you right now. If you can hear me, uh, you may you may need to make adjustments to your settings up above the gear thing perhaps sometimes your microphone is not the microphone being captured by the hangout or if it's a connection problem you may have to reconnect uh, okay does anybody know the general term for all the things okay that uh, that you use to ride a horse all the equipment no, no. Uh, I know. I know the word saddle. I think is the thing that you put on the horse, right? You sit yeah. on it. You okay. sit on it, right? 
saddle is probably the most essential part of your tack. It's called tack. And it refers to all the equipment you use for riding a horse. In fact, most, if you have some horses, you probably have a tack room. Uh, that's normal to mm. keep all your equipment. And yes, of course, saddle is essential. Uh, uh, yeah. Does Does anybody know the two kinds of saddles? Well, primary. There's a, actually there's more than two, but um, there's there are two basic styles. Anybody have any idea? No. No. Okay. There's a uh, Western saddle, and then there's an English saddle. Uh, okay, a Western saddle has what's called a pommel. Here, I can show you, actually. Just a second. Oh, no, I can't show you. <laughs> I have a picture <laughs> of uh, an English saddle. Okay, I can show you that, though. Um, hang on. Okay, this is a saddle uh, here. And uh, this is actually an English saddle. A Western saddle has what's called a pommel. There's a, like a handle in front um, mm. where a cowboy would keep his rope, <laughs> for example. Uh, so, uh, right, so those are the two basic kinds of sa saddles. When you see like horse jumping um, or... or uh, Equine events, by the way, there's another word. Equine refers to horses. Anything equine is horses. Okay. Uh, so equestrian events are like those Olympic events where they do show jumping and, um, oh, I don't know what all. Uh, in any case, they generally use an English saddle. It's it's cowboys that use a western saddle because they're roping and lassoing cows and such. Uh, let me quickly welcome Ken to the class. Hi, Ken. Yes, hello. Hello. How are you today? Yes, I'm fine. Thank you. How are you? Great. How about you, Ken? You ever uh, do you have any experience riding horses? Uh, no. But sometimes I went to the beach. Uh, sometimes horse comes. Maybe horse riding club. Hello. Hello. On the yeah. beach. Yeah, at the beach. Yeah, sometimes horse. Okay. Is riding on the beach because usually uh, maybe road here is not so suitable for riding horse. I never seen that on the, on the road, but at the beach. Yeah, it's a little bit scary riding a horse on the road, actually. <laughs> uh, um. <laughs> Yeah, uh, right, uh, okay, so, <laughs> hello, Wilson, Wilson, <laughs> your, hi there, okay, uh, all right, well, there's a picture of a saddle here, uh, David, you mentioned saddle, do you know any of the other parts of tack, or parts of the saddle? Uh, the whip. <laughs> <laughs> the whip, okay. Uh, yeah, some people may use a whip and some do not. Uh, okay, fine. Um, Keiko, do you know any other parts of the tack, the equipment? Do you know any of the other words? Bridle. Okay, bridle. Long I sound, but bridle. yes. And what's, what's the bridle? The bridle... Is the piece uh, which we we introduce in the into the horse's mouth in order to take control control of it. Well, okay. The actual piece that goes in the horse's mouth or or the is the bit. But yeah, the bridle holds the bit. So yeah, you're not. The bit is part of the bridle. Ah, okay. Yeah, and that's the purpose okay. of the bridle to to hold the bit and we, the reins. We put the bridle on the horse's head. 
That's right. And knows. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. You got it. And yes, David, the reins. Um, yeah. Pretty good idea to keep your hands on the reins. <laughs> Absolutely. The reins. Okay. Bright all bit. Reins. Very good. Um, maybe you might use a halter. You might use a blanket and other such equipment. Wilson, are you there? I just want to check your connectivity. Yes, video. yes, I'm here. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, tack is the gears, including saddle, bridle, halter. Uh, okay, who can tell me what are the horses have different gears, <laughs> shall we say? Wilson? <laughs> not really. We would not use this word in English for a horse, but it's a, just a way to relate it to cars. What gears do a, does a horse have? First gear. <laughs> not really a gear. A horse, you know, like this, yes. and then... And then... Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know the, the, the phases. I know it start walking slowly, then it start... Uh, uh, how can I say uh, in Brazilian is trotando, but I don't say in English. Um, very and, good. And then okay. running. Yes. Okay, trot is the English trot. word. So it's yeah, okay, English. similar to Portuguese. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, then there's a kind of a I don't know how to explain it. It's it's the the kind of half run where the horse goes tippity cop, tippity cop, tippity cop. <laughs> I don't really know how to explain it, but that's called a canter. <laughs> canter. <laughs> yeah, and then there's the full out running, running like crazy, running like the wind, and that's a, a gallop. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, right, so uh, just to sh share that with you, here we go. Walk, trot, canter, and gallop. Um, these yeah, are the yeah, yeah. what are considered the natural gates. A, a gate, by the way, Ken. What is a gate? Uh, do you have any idea? Okay, for natural gate of horse legs. Well, okay. Um, you can have a gate, and you're not a horse. Um, you might have a short, quick gait. You might have a long, striding gait. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is a nail. Well, it has to do with how you walk. So if you walk in short, quick steps, mm -hmm. you have a, a short gait. Uh, if you long, striding steps, to stride is to take long steps. So your your gait is the way you step. So when we talk about the natural gates of a horse, the way they naturally move, they're, they're normal. In the, Olymp in, the, uh, in the Olympic Games, there is a, a game that the, the, the guys uh, uh, gates, okay? They, they cannot run, only uh, walk in a, in, a, in a normal way, but fast. Without taking the fruits of the, the the ground. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely, absolutely. Um, oh right. Oh, you're talking about you're talking about human beings. Yes, yeah, human beings. Yes, it's oh, against right. the way they they run, no? Yeah, they walk with a very specialized gait. I could say. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What is that called anyway? It's like. I don't even know. Does, does anybody here know the Olympic sport where they're run walking? They, they kind of. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Google now. <laughs> okay, thank you. I think it's it's related to march, maybe. Well, it's like, like the military, the, the military, the the army, the people in a parade, they march. Well, you're absolutely right because I remember. I mean, it's similar to that. Marching is a gate. Marching. There yes, you go. Yes. But uh, yeah, that that it's Olympic. Power, it's called yeah. power walking. Power walking. Yeah, that's it. All right. Power walking. Yes. 
That's it. But you're absolutely right, Wilson. I, I know there's a rule that one foot must be touching the ground at all times. Yes, that's it. That's it, yes. So it's not like running, you know, where you're jumping through the air or whatever. All right, so yes. Okay, that's it. You guys got it. Anyway, those are gates. Uh, okay, you may hear Western. If you're riding Western, you may hear a uh, walk, jog, a lope, and, and gallop. Uh, of course, we sometimes in English will use some of these words for human perambulation. That means walking in very fancy word, perambul perambulation, walking. Because a person can obviously walk, a person can jog, a person can lope along like a slow run. You m might use gallop for a human, although that's rare. Uh, you can trot to the store. Um, actually, this is used for people. Trot is used. How can I express it? Um, we use this in English like when we're disciplining a child. Trot yourself in here and sit down on the chair, young man. <laughs> you just trot yourself right into the principal's office. Uh, for, for some reason, meaning kind of hurry, walk your way to the principal's office. I, I don't know why, but it's generally used in that way when we're talking about people. We just simply never use canter for human beings. Uh, you just don't. It's a, it's a really, the canter for a horse is very, seems unnatural. It's natural for a horse, but it seems weird. And I don't think humans could do it. Humans skip, I guess, <laughs> instead of canter. Uh, okay. Da, 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 da. All right. Um, okay. More about their gait. Uh, okay. Can you read this uh, little piece here for me, David, please? Uh, sorry? No yes. Problem. Yeah, okay. I can do it. Okay, hold on one second. All right. Some specific breeds have their own unique gates other than the main four. As an example, Tennessee walking horses can do the running walk, and standard breads can do the pace. Okay, so Tennessee walking horses, these are standard breads. These are um, breeds of horses, uh, different types, specific types of horses. Uh, okay, uh, right, so there are other gates, but they're they're specialized, and there are some in the competitions that they do. I, I don't remember the, the names for them, but they're very weird ones where the horse kind of pauses before it takes a step. It looks really cool, but I don't really know what exactly what it's called, or they kind of jump up with their front legs. Anyway, they, there's different gates. Uh, okay, uh, Wilson, can you read this next paragraph? Okay, uh, aids, signals used by a rider to pass his instruction to his mount. Artificial aids uh, include the whip and spurs. Natural aids include hands, legs, voice cues, and weight cues. Okay, so uh, Wilson, signals. Uh, signals. Yes. Okay. This is tricky. Please be aware of this in English. When you with the without the suffix, it's sign, and the G is silent. Yes. Right. So this fools a lot of people. Actually, um, it's sign, but then when you add the the um, suffix or ending al, suddenly the G becomes. You can hear it. It's no no longer silent. It's mm -hmm. voiced. What we say, you okay. can hear it. So, signal. All right. Signature. Signature. Yes. Signature. Yeah. And then again, it's it's voiced again. Um, all right. Well, uh, actually, David already mentioned the whip, um, artificial aids, whip and spurs. Uh, what are spurs, Wilson? 
I don't know. I really don't know. No? Does anybody know? No. My spurs, uh, they jingle jangle. I, I, I think they are the this metal things that they put in their shoes. Uh, oh, yes. to control the horse. Yes. 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 Right, spurs. That's right. On the heel of the boot, usually, usually they're circular and they might have little pointy parts. Mm -hmm. okay. Like a star, a nice star with the points. So yeah, like right. it hurts right. the horse. Yeah, that's right. I personally never ever use spurs. I don't really see the point. Spurs. I, or a whip. I don't really get the point of whip and spurs. I, I guess if you really are horse racing or something. A whip is to, to is a piece of uh, of uh, something to hit the horse. No? Yes, could be wood or could be uh, leather. Is that? Uh huh. Yes, it's usually made out of leather with a stiff leather. handle and then a, a loose or you know like a like rope, a loose end. It's usually a, kind of small. Yeah, you see the jockeys in a horse race. The Those jockey. guys are. Yeah. Ride a, a horse in a horse race. That's a jockey. You see them use the whip, like in the home stretch. You mean then jockey, the jockey takes out his whip and like that. Indiana Jones used a whip. Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. A big whip, right? Yes. Oh yeah, a bull whip. Okay. By the way, you're oh, thinking in Indiana Jones. That's called a bull whip. That that one he bull used. Whip. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't use that horseback riding. Uh, okay. Um, oh, okay. Very good, David. Okay, there's a an idiomatic phrase on the spur of the moment. Excellent. Yes. Uh, meaning just doing something without any pre-thought at all. Oh, we decided to drive into the city on the spur of the moment. I guess it has to do with the sudden quickness of when you spur a horse. By the way, can be used as a verb, spur the horse. Um, Ken, uh, we're going to get to your horseshoes in just a minute, actually. So hold on to your shoes. <laughs> uh, okay, one more thing about um, aids. These are to control the horse. Uh, in other words, make it go faster, make it stop, make it uh, go left or right. Of course, you also have the reins, which helps you control left or right. Uh, natural aids include hands, legs, voice cues, and weight cues. Keiko, what are some voice cues that you might use with a horse? Uh -huh. uh, here uh, in Brazil, we we make uh, big sounds like uh, ah, very good. Same thing <laughs> in America. Giddy up! <laughs> we, we we might if we want to start off fast. Sometimes people say giddy up. <laughs> giddy up. <laughs> if we're just starting out walking, yeah, that. I don't even know what to call that in English. S smacking sound. I have no idea what to call that, actually. It must have a name, but it, I don't really know what it is. We do the same thing. Um, yeah, a little onomatopoeia, but that one eludes me. Okay, any other sounds, Keiko, that you might use? No. How about to stop? Well, I don't remember any other teacher. Okay. I'd say, whoa, 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 yes. whoa Nelly, yeah. <laughs> simmer down, Nelly, whoa, uh, okay, basically go and stop are the voice cues, um, the natural cues when it says hands, legs, well, of course, your hands are on the reins, hopefully, but you're also, you squeeze your legs together or your knees more properly, that, that will make the horse to go, weight cue, some horses that are really smart, you can lean forward, lean back, and the horse knows what that means. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. 
There we go. Oh, those are spurs and a whip. Spurs. Uh, okay. Uh, here's another word for uh, to talk about with a horse Confirm conformation. Uh, this is you might you probably heard the word confirmation. This is confirm conformation. conformation. It's, hard, it's hard to say correctly. Confirmation has to do with the structural and general makeup of a horse. Uh, okay, before I share, go ahead and share the picture. Ken. Uh, Ken, mm -hmm. how many parts to a horse or what can you say about a horse's conformation? <laughs> the management is a kind of horse. Yeah, well, okay. The parts, the parts of his body, basically. Parts of his legs, body, yeah. neck, oh. head, tail. Okay. Uh, hair. Hair. We don't yeah. usually say hair. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know the hair like something. <laughs> the hair like thing. We, yeah, the hair like thing. We call that a mane. Mm -hmm. Paw. Yeah. Fur. Yeah. Okay. A horse has fur, but we, we don't really say that. But the hair on the back of the neck is usually mm -hmm. called the mane. Let me uh, mm -hmm. if I can share here. Okay. All right. You, you got a lot of it. Head. Uh, all right. Shoulder. The there's some specialty points, which we actually call points. Um, you talk about the point of the hip, the point of the buttock. Uh, notice we divide the pelvis, because there's two. You, as a human, have one pelvis where your hips are. When we talk about horses, we say we talk about three pelvises, which is not really kind of crazy, because they don't have six legs, but... I don't, I don't know why. why. What's that? That's why they are fast. <laughs> they have six legs. Have six. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Parotid gland. I don't know what that is. Cannon bone. I don't know. Are these, are, there's some weird things here. Ah, the girth. Okay. Both the part of the horse's body down, down here. You see the term the girth. Both the part of his body and the, the how you put the, the thing that attaches the saddle underneath him is also called the girth. So you tighten or cinch mm -hmm. the girth. We use the verb cinch um, a lot when dealing with horses. You cinch something, you tighten it. Mm -hmm. So you cinch the girth when you tie it, tie on the saddle. Um, the God. Garth Brooks named after this. Who? Garth Brooks? Yeah. <laughs> That's extremely funny. I have never thought about that before. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, this Garth is with an A. This is Girth with a with, oh. a, with an I. But uh, okay, that's that's funny. Uh, all right, Ken, can you? Read me this paragraph of informative information about okay. horses, please. Cold-blooded. Uh, Designating any horse or breed of horse, horse without Arabian or Eastern blood in its breeding. In practice, since many so-called cold-blooded breeds have been improved by the use of Arab blood, the distinction is based mainly on physical type, broadly our heavy draft horse and most European native ponies are cl classed as cold blooded. There you go. Strangely, they don't they don't really use the term hot blooded. Sometimes they do. I've heard that actually, but much rarer. So basically Arabians, all right. What are Arabians used for? Ken, do you have any idea? Arabian use uh, for the horse, for maybe uh, for uh, for traveling around. Possibly, and also for racing. Racing, okay. Usually, mm -hmm. when you see racehorses, they're Arabians. They may have, 
you know, mixed blood, but usually they're Arabians. They're the really fast ones. Uh, draft horses are the really big ones. Mm -hmm. uh, does anybody, anybody in the class know any types of draft horses? Like the Budweiser horses. Do you know what those are called? The horses that they use to advertise Budweiser beer. Mm. No. no. No? Okay. Those are called Clydesdales. They're really humongous. Uh, what about the horses and and this is uh, and this commercial for deodorant? Oh, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. Do horses okay, do horses use deodorant? <laughs> no. Mustang. <laughs> Was that again? Mustang. Mustang. Maybe. Maybe you're right. Oh, okay. I guess. Mustang. What's a Mustang besides a pretty cool car? Um, Mustangs. Okay. Mustang is the name for uh, American horses, North America, South America, Central America, whatever, that are running around wild. Actually, you guys, are there wild horses in in um, Brazil? No, no, not anymore. No, no, not at all. No, no. Oh, okay. No teacher. Okay. The, but these are wild horses brought by uh, Spanish people. That is correct. Absolutely correct. Um, yes, they are. In the United States, there are definitely wild horses. Oh my! I can vouch for that. I. <laughs> I will swear to that, as I have been camping in the desert in Nevada once, and I was plagued by a wild horse who kept knocking down my tent <laughs> and running through my campsite full speed, knocking everything all over the place. He was torturing me. Uh, in what, what, what state of the USA? Nevada. What state? Nevada. Yeah, okay. not that... Not that far outside of Las Vegas, as a matter of fact. Mm. Okay. This big heavy guy here is a draft horse. Uh, draft yeah, I've worked with these before. I had a cousin who did logging, all right? He he cut um, land he, he, so that people could build a house. He cut out the trees, and then he, he sold the trees to a lumber yard. Anyway, he had two of these big boys. You would not believe. I, with my own eyes, watched these horses work, and I just couldn't possibly conceive of what they were doing. They could drag out like six trees that were too big to put your arms around, that were, you know, 20 meters long. It has to be just thousands of... They must be pulling like 10,000 pounds. It's really insane um, over that. They're really impressive. Okay, Ken, now we get into your your uh, shoes. Let's talk about the shoes. All right, the guy who puts the shoes on or changes them or fixes them or whatever is called a farrier. Hmm. Very specialized name. He's a professional that uh, he his job is to tend to the horse's hoofs and shoe the horses. Uh, okay, there we go. There is a horseshoe. Um, what is a frog? Here's a use of the word frog. I bet you didn't really know. Um, okay. A f uh, frog is a V-shaped area. Found on the bottom of a horse's hooves. Here. Okay. Not the part that is not shooed. It's called a frog. Aha. Uh -huh. Interesting and weird. Uh, does anybody know where the withers are on a horse? Anybody in the class ever heard of withers? Okay. Uh, all right. Well. Maybe uh, David can tell us. David, can you read this short section here? Sure. <laughs> Withers. 
point of the uh, point at the bottom of the neck. This is usually characterized by a slightly raised area just above the shoulders. The saddle lays just behind this. A horse height is measured from the ground to the withers. Okay, how how do we measure a horse's uh, horses? Sorry, horses height, David. You just measure from the from the withers to the to the ground. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, but we use a special unit of measurement. We don't say centimeters oh. or inches or feet or anything else like that. There's a very special measurement specifically for horses, not oh, used that's... anywhere else. Actually, uh, let's see. Um... Uh, no, you got me that one. <laughs> no? Anybody? No. Uh, anybody else in class? No, no. Phantom? No, I think you're thinking of fathom, and that's a, a measurement of... Oh, that's for water, right? That's for water, yeah. yes. Fathom, yeah. No, then I I don't know. Okay, and uh, horses uh, can be, okay, for example, 14 hands, hands high. We use hands. You use hands? Uh, yeah. Um, the, the measurement is like the measurement of one hand on top of the other, believe it or not. Are you serious? Uh, totally serious. There is this, <laughs> it translates to a certain, a certain measurement, and, and now I can't remember what it is, but... Uh, a relatively small horse would be maybe 12 hands high. A really big draft horse might be 16 hands, 17 hands even. That would be a very big horse. Average kind of horse maybe 14, like an Arabian. They're around 14 hands high, about. Uh, okay, so, oh, speaking of, um, David, you 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 wrote there was a frog under the horse's frog. It just because it re reminded me, of course, in English we have the the expression that I have a frog in my throat, meaning uh, <laughs> that you, you can't speak very well. So can you imagine having this frog in your throat? <laughs> so what is the idea coming from this kind of frog or the an the other kind of frog? The, I think like it's, supposed, it's supposed to be the other kind of frog because in English when we say you have a frog in your throat, you talk like this. I've got a sore throat. I've got a frog in my throat. So but you how, however, but you, also, you can also say I have a horsey voice, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good point. But, of course, keep in mind that's, that's H-O-A-R-S-E. -E, uh, uh, you have a horse voice. So it's spelled differently. Pronounced the same. It's, uh, it's a homophone. Oh, I didn't know that. Good for me. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, good for everyone to learn that. There, all right. There's horse and then there's horse. <laughs> so you could have a horse horse if your horse said... <laughs> uh, okay. Sorry. Anyway, that's silly. But, uh, okay, here's the withers. Basically, right in front of where you would, of course, put the saddle. Um... Okay, let's talk boys, girls, children, <laughs> males, females, uh, adults, all of that. Uh, let's see. Wilson? Yes? Okay, what's uh, a young horse called? Pony? Maybe a pony. Uh, ah, okay. Interesting. Yes, colloquially, you're absolutely correct. Um, we see a small horse and we call it a pony uh, automatically. Pony. But yeah. in reality, there in reality we, we, we say horses and then there's smaller breeds of horses which are known as ponies. Technically speaking, a pony is not a young horse. We have other words. Mm. Pony is actually a type of breed. But you're right, most lay people who are not horse people whatever, would call any small horse, and they see a small horse and they say, oh, it's a pony. But for example, Shetland ponies, it's a breed of horse, they're very small. Uh, okay, 
But uh, all right, Keiko, do you know any names for young or baby horses? No, I no, teacher, I don't. Keiko, no. Uh, okay. No, I don't, out. teacher. Ken, David. Anybody have any idea? This no idea. No, it's me. Uh, okay, no idea. All right, Ken, no idea. Okay, here we go. Uh, all right. Well, here are the official terms. All right, a foal is a oh. horse of any gender, male or female, that's under one year. Uh, specifically, a filly is a female foal under one year, and a colt is a male foal. You hear people mix these terms up all the time, all right? Uh, people call just a girl horse a filly. Um, people call any male horse a colt. People make mistakes with these words a lot. Um, it is sometimes normal in spoke in spoken conversational English to refer to a young girl, like a teenage girl, as a or maybe young twenties or something, to call a young girl a filly. Look at that fine looking filly standing over by the bar. <laughs> wink wink. Nudge nudge. But that would be in the in, on the farm, right? On a, uh, in a place where we have a lot of cowboys and cowgirls. I don't think in the uh, city would say, well, look at that filly, what you're talking oh, no. about. <laughs> no, you might, uh, uh, no, she's a good looking filly over there. No, you might really? get uh, oh, everywhere. Okay. Yeah. okay. Let's uh, look at some other ones. A yearling uh, is pretty obvious. It's uh, uh, a horse that's a year old. Well, that one's pretty easy to figure out. Um, Okay. Yeah, okay, a mare is a female horse, which is technically over four years old, but you're going to hear this term used again, not imprecisely, you, uh, I do it, most people do it, they, they call any female horse a mare to them. Technically speaking, it's supposed to be over four years of age, but Really, no one's going to notice except people who are really into horses. Uh, a gelding is a castrated male horse of any age, and a stallion, which you've probably heard, is an uncastrated male horse that's over four years of age. Stallions are used for breeding, of course. You may hear... Uh, the word stallion used in re reference to people as well. Oh, he's a he's a wild stallion. <laughs> yeah, I have, heard that. <laughs> yeah. I, I have heard that once, you know, about stallion. It's very common yeah. for men. You know, he's a stallion, you know. It's yeah, very macho I mean, thing. Macho, exactly. Um, even there's a degree of sexuality there. Uh, okay. Uh, one, one question. One question. A donkey is uh, is the same of gelding. A donkey? No. Yes. Uh, okay. How does this work? I always forget this. Um. Uh, because there's mule. All right. There's different terms, right? There's um. There's there's mule. Uh, donkey. donkey. And well, ass. Ass, yeah. Not dinky. <laughs> dinky. Oops. Wrong. And ass. And one is a separate, it's a totally separate breed, a breed. separate species. And I, I know that they get it mixed ahead, up. I always get it mixed up, which one is which. And one is a mix of horse and, and the other breed. And I always yeah. get these mixed up. I believe that the mule is a mix of donkey and a horse. Okay, I think that sounds right. Yeah, yeah. but is and, and the mule cannot uh, reproduce. Is that's uh, right? Barn? Bart? No. It is. Uh, it, it is barren. Barren. Thank, thank you. It's barren. Yeah. Yes, that's right. It, um, barren. Okay, a woman, a, a woman human who can't have children, can also be said to be barren. Um, barren. 
Right. So that's it. I, I believe I totally believe that David is correct. So mule is like another, like a, a totally different species. Uh, well, obviously related to horses, clearly. And a horse and a mule can reproduce and and have a donkey, but the donkey can't reproduce. So that's it. Okay. Very good. And oh, goodness, we're done. And look, the time is up. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. thank you for joining me on our little horse trip there. Thanks a lot, everybody. And uh, see you again real soon.